Hello and welcome to this tutorial on sending HL7 messages to an Azure VM. You'll be able to create other message types as well, such as Fire or JSON, whichever you like. We're going to set it up so that we can receive whatever message type you need on an HTTPS connection. So you'll see here, I've already got a VM configured, it's up and running, and I have an RDP connection to it. Inside the VM, I've already gone ahead and I've installed HR7 Soup's integration host application and I downloaded the free trial as well, so it's ready for use. So first we've got to create an HTTP listener. So I'm going to start by clicking New, then change the activity type to an HTTP receiver. We give it a nice service name and we're configured to receive on port 8080. And I'm going to select to use HTTPS and then copy the address for use later on. I can now hit save, and we've internally configured it to receive messages on 8080, but we need to expose that address to the internet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back to the Azure configuration, and we're gonna allow that through. So we head over to the networking category, and we just have to add a new inbound port rule Add port rule. I'll set my source to IP addresses. And then we set it to the IP address ranges coming in. So I only want this to be able to send from my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Google and search for what is my IP address. And there's my IP address that so I can copy and head over to the rules. I will paste that in as my incoming address. Uh, the source port ranges I will leave as star and the destination will be IP addresses. Finally, we need to send it to an IP address. I'm going to just use the internal IP address on the network card. Services custom and the destination port is already set to 8080. So I think we're prepared to add that in. Great, that's gonna create the security rule. That can take a couple of minutes to do, but mostly it happens pretty quickly. So now let's head back to the server and we need to allow it through the firewall. So I'm just going to click start, search for firewall, go to advanced settings, and now we just add a new inbound rule. There, yeah, new rule, and we're going to allow it through on the port. Next. We're going to type in port 8080, next, and allow the connection, next, and we'll just allow it through on the public one. We're going to call this HL7 soup, click finished, and that is now ready to receive. So let's try that out. I'll just head back to my computer, and in order to test it, I'm going to use HL7 Sue, the editor, and for that we've got a selection of HL7 messages ready to send, so let's send that to the server. So back to the server again, I, all I want to do is quickly grab that address. So if I double click back onto here, and I copied it earlier, I forgot I did. Uh, we've already got that address here, so I can just copy that address, and that, again that's the internal address. Um, we don't need to save, I just need to go back. And we can create a new receiver inside of, uh, sorry, a new sender inside of HL7 Soup. Go to senders, click new. Um, I will change it to an HTTP sender. And I'm going to paste in that URL. Now we just need to provide the IP address of the server back over to Azure. And here is that public IP address. I'm going to copy that. And paste that in over the, oh, I'm going to get that right. Don't you need to keep the port 8080 as part of the port? And now, if I hit test, we get a success. So I can now save and close. Bring back up HR7 soup. Look at the messages, and I can send that through. We've got an acknowledgement of a successful send, and indeed we have received it. So I can head back and send the rest of the messages. Now, what happens to the message once we've received it? 
we want to save it to the disk. So I'm just going to alter this workflow, add in another step, and we're going to write it out to a file in this case. So I just need to put it into a directory. C temp will work for now, and I'm going to call it my file dot hl7. Then just for make sure that the file is unique, I'm just going to insert a variable of the workflow instance ID that will make sure that each file name has a unique ID attached to it. So now I can save and close this. And if I run those messages through again, head back to the VM, open the file system, and we will see those appearing. And here are my files received on the server. If this tutorial has helped you, please like, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to contact HL7 Super Support if you need any help.